I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Nicaragua. I have a lot going on this week, and I'm going to answer uh, a question that I actually have come up pretty often about the seemingly paradoxical relationship between the United States and Nicaragua, or truly the first world North American countries and much of the uh, third world Latin America and other regions as to why migration seems to uh, go in both directions. And if people are looking for a better uh, life, then why would wouldn't everyone move to a single place rather than seemingly move to a lot of different ones? And I think there's some really straightforward answers to this that are not what people are expecting. And we're going to get to that as well as an update as to my travel and the plans of what I have going on right after the bump. We'll kick off with travel plans and you can skip ahead if that's not what you're looking for, but uh, in the coming days. So right now I'm recording this at the last possible second to get this out. I do have a video done already for tomorrow, so you should be getting this one on Sunday with any hope it will be done and uploaded, but I'm gonna be working very hard to make that happen because I am leaving immediately upon finishing this video. I will be heading to uh, finalize packing my bag, get into my, my ride, head to the bus terminal, and I'm heading to Managua, where I will be staying at the Best Western Las Mercedes, right across the street from the Managua airport, because I need to be at the airport at 4 a.m. tomorrow. Now, this ended up being a terrible scheduling disaster. I actually could have done this trip by bus faster and far less uh, effort uh, than doing it by plane, but they were scheduling it from the other side and were not aware that I could take the bus in one of the directions and make things a lot easier. So anyway, I have to be at the airport at 4 a.m. for a 6 a.m. flight. I have to be at the gate by 5 a.m. Of course, that should be leaving myself plenty of time, but it's an international flight. Normally, I'd like to leave three hours, but this is the opening of the airport, so there's no reason to be there three hours ahead. You can't get in. So we're going to get there at 4 a.m. I'm straight across the street. First flight of the day, I will go straight through should have no problems whatsoever. It's a tiny airport. Managua is very easy to deal with. Uh, it is my first time flying out, I believe, on my Sedula. So this is a little bit of a different process. I still have to have a passport, obviously, but I have full residency here in Nicaragua, so I have to show that as I'm exiting the country, which is a new process uh, for me at least uh, flying out. I haven't been at the airport to fly myself in a little while. Uh, so I will be flying not where you think I will be flying, but I will be flying to Panama, where I have a 10-hour layover. Uh, and will be spending the entire day in Panama City. Now, thankfully, I have friends in Panama. We're planning on going out for brunch and at least getting to hang out for some of that time, so it at least gets broken up. I'm still going to get dropped off back at the airport pretty early and have a very long time there waiting, but you do need to wait a lot for flights, so it's not the end of the world, but it will be nice to see Panama City because I haven't been back in the city for a very long time, so we're planning on going to Casco Viejo and hanging out some place fun, which I will do my best to record because that will be neat and interesting. So that is the beginning of my day. Then when I finally get into my flight late in the afternoon, somewhere around six o'clock in Panama, I will be flying to San Jose, Costa Rica. Now this is again crazy. I could have just taken a bus directly to Costa Rica and caught the flight that way and done it with probably less effort, but okay. So I will then be in Costa Rica. I only have 25 minutes to make that flight, so there's a lot of chance, opportunity there for things to go wrong. Once I catch that flight, I'll be flying to Guatemala. So I'll be flying over where I am right now. I will spend every moment from the time I finish this video until a full 28 hours later being in the wrong direction from the place I'm looking to go. An entire day plus more lost in the wrong direction. I'll finally get up to Guatemala City at 9.30 tomorrow night where I will then go to bed and try to get a little bit of sleep because I will get extremely little sleep tonight. I should be able to get plenty. Then I then can get up, hopefully have time to go get a nice breakfast. I do like hanging out in Guatemala City. So I'll get to see it a tiny bit again, try to film a little bit for you guys. And then it will be time to uh, head back to Aurora to the airport there in downtown Guatemala City, where I'm catching the short two hour flight over to Belize City. That is where I'm actually going to be working. So I will arrive on Sunday afternoon, uh, about two o'clock, three o'clock in Belize City. Um, I'll get checked into my hotel. I have Sunday night to relax and hang out in Belize. I have all day Monday to hang out in Belize. Again, hopefully be able to make some content uh, of the places that I'm at. Plus I'll probably try to squeeze something in uh, other than that. And then on Tuesday, I have to work in Belize 
Tuesday afternoon, immediately after work, I'm being taken to the airport, flown to Guatemala again, where I will get another night's sleep in Guatemala City. I then get to get up pretty early, catch an early flight, and I should be back in Managua for noon on Wednesday, which is my eldest daughter's 16th birthday. So I really got to get back for that. Luckily, if I'm in Guatemala and everything else goes wrong, I can at least catch a bus or something to get down here, uh, but it's all pretty hectic. So that is what I have going on over the next few days, starting immediately after this video. Okay, on to today's topic. So we get this a lot. When you're looking at the United States, we see a ton of people saying that they want to get out of the U.S. and looking to become expats and move south. But Americans are often seeing Nicaraguans say, well, they want to become expats and move north to the United States. So in both cases, both countries see a huge influx of expats from the opposite country. Now, this is part of a broader scope. This is not an American Nicaraguan thing. These are the examples that we see because I'm an American and I live in Nicaragua. So I am one of these expats who's become an immigrant here in Nicaragua. And so I represent a part of uh, this ecosystem, but there's, there's a bigger picture that we wanna look at. So the first thing that's the bigger picture is region. So the United States, Canada, and much of Western Europe represents one region along generally with New Zealand, New Zealand and Australia, not 100% of the time, but in general. And Nicaragua is part of a large zone that also includes more or less everything south of Mexico. Sometimes you can even include Mexico and most of South America. Plus, there's other regions of the world that would kind of get lumped in as well. But Nicaragua and the United States represent more or less the most extreme examples within this zone. Both countries have a large amount of migration to the opposite and a very high level of desire of people who are leaving the United States are very much very typically, like, Nicaragua is so perfect, so awesome, we want to go there. I'm a great example of that. And so many Nicaraguans are like, America is so great, I got to go there. And, and people are really caught by how can both of these groups exist? Why would each one want to go to a different place? But there's there's two big reasons for this. The first is I'm going to point out the expat principle. And we've talked about this in a lot of videos is simply that by becoming an expat, you get a lot more power in life. You get a lot of protections. So there is a certain drive for people from anywhere in the world, even people who are in a really great location already, which obviously for a lot of people, the U.S. is a great location that they want to be in. And for a lot of other people, Nicaragua is a great location that they want to be in. So in both of these cases, you have large bodies of people who are already in a place that may be really good for them, but they also get this pressure of simply wanting to be an expat. And to do that, they need to leave whatever country they're from. So that's one thing. That is a minor pressure, but it does exist. People generally get a lot of benefits from being expats, especially people who are looking at going into business, being entrepreneurs, working digitally online, digital nomads, those kinds of things. They tend to benefit rather heavily from that. And so you find groups who are doing it just for that reason, or that is one of the factors creating pressure to make this happen. So that alone explains a certain amount of global migration simply because, like me, uh, a lot of people simply don't want to, for, for whether it's uh, uh, cultural reasons or social reasons or adventurous reasons uh, or, or financial reasons, they don't want to be in the place, whatever that is, where they were born, where they brought up, brought, were brought up. They want to go explore the world or, or seek other opportunities or leverage the advantages that are given to expats. The second thing is a much bigger factor, and this is where very specific groups of countries matter. So what we have with the United States leading this pack in most cases, and almost always it's number one in this, is the job country. So the US, Canada, much of Western Europe qualify under this category. These are countries where they want immigration for the purpose of having new workers. They have a shortage of workers and a surplus of job positions that they want to fill. And so they look at immigration uh, of, of bringing in expats being primarily for the value of filling existing jobs. That is why they attract people. So anyone who's, or nearly anyone who's looking at moving to one of those countries, especially the United States, is generally doing so because they need to find a job. So they are someone who either has a bad job or no job, a job deficit situation, and they're trying to solve that by moving to a country with surplus jobs. So that is Nearly any time you hear someone say that they're interested in moving to the United States, ask them enough and they'll say, well, obviously the reason you move there is because you're looking for work. That's why you want to live there. And that makes a lot of sense, but it's something we don't articulate very often. 
when we flip that and take people who have jobs or don't need a job, maybe they're retired, maybe they are independently wealthy, maybe they've invested and they have the ability to, to live off of that, or maybe they're simply working online, one way or another, they've established their financial position and they do not need to acquire a new job or move themselves into a position to strengthen their job. This group is not looking to live in job uh, surplus countries because those countries tend to be much more expensive and often bring a lot of other social negatives with them. That's where you tend to get more violence, you tend to get more stress, you tend to get more traffic, simple things like that. So the group of people who are adequately employed or have the financial resources to not need to be further employed typically look for quality of life countries. So they're looking for places that are safer, have better weather, have a better lifestyle, a slower pace of life, and they don't care if there are significant numbers of job uh, opportunities or not because they're not planning on taking advantage of them. This doesn't matter to them. And so this is a really common standard process that we see. Anyone who needs to find work is pushing to get to North America or Western Europe. Anyone who has work is pushing to get out of those places and into places like Nicaragua. Now, the United States being number one in jobs is the poster child for I need work. I want to go to the to somewhere. It's going to be the United States is your first obvious place to go. Nicaragua is the poster child for quality of life. Nicaragua has very low violent crime, it has a very low cost of living, it has beautiful paradise-like weather, it's easy to get a house on the beach or in the mountains or to buy multiple places. It's easy to rent, it's easy to buy, it's super easy to move into. So for people who have the flexibility to move to more or less wherever they want, Nicaragua represents one of many really excellent choices. Just like for people who are looking for work, the United States represents the leader among several very good choices. So we see it's actually a, not a paradox at all. It is that some people, everyone is looking for the best life that they can get. If you have work, then you want to be in Nicaragua or a country like Nicaragua. If you don't have work, then you want to get to a country like the United States where you can solve that problem. So the reason that we see this in such a paradoxical way is that we only see the people who are migrating. We don't see the people who are staying. There are hundreds of millions of people who stay in the United States every day because they need work and they are getting that work in the United States and maybe their job doesn't let them move abroad or uh, they need to look for another job and need the flexibility of being able to stay within a single market or whatever. So the people who are employed in the United States and don't have the means to leave it are going to stay and we won't see them in migration numbers because we assume that the the default is that people will stay where they are. And that's mostly true, but it's misleading. In the same way, those people who live in Nicaragua but do have jobs or are financially stable and don't need a, an additional job or don't need job mobility are likely to stay in Nicaragua. So again, we don't see them in any statistics. When we're looking at the number of immigrants or the number of expats, those are often uh, misportrayed, Almost all of the people we see going in both directions are expats, not immigrants. I'm the exception. I am actually an immigrant at this time. Uh, but what we see is consistently that both Americans and Nicaraguans who are looking for work will go to or remain in the United States. Those who do not need work one way or another will move to or remain in Nicaragua. So we see consistency in this. There is no paradox. It is our vision of it that we only observe the people who are leaving their home country and moving to another. And so we see the shift of a portion of the population and not the stagnation of the rest of the population, of the majority of the population. But if you actually took people aside and went one by one and interviewed millions upon millions of people, you would see a really consistent pattern that the people who are moving are almost always for these reasons. Oh, I need a job. So they're someone who's going, you could pick this out based on what they say. I'm looking for work. Therefore, they're moving to the United States. I have work. I'm looking for a place where my dollar will go farther, or I have better quality of life for my family. They're heading to Nicaragua or somewhere like 
like it. Uh, if someone is staying put, if they're staying put because of their job, chances are that's the United States. If they're staying put uh, because they want quality of life and they don't need a job, it's likely in Nicaragua and so forth. And so it's it, it's an incredibly consistent picture. And uh, I don't think anyone should be surprised by it, but it comes up so often because of course people aren't thinking about it. People think of migration as being uh, a uniform activity. Everyone moves away from their home country for the same reasons, but that is absolutely not the case. And a uh, as someone who lives in a place where people are going out and in all the time and we often have direct access to them and get to talk to them all of the time, this, uh, of course, are things that if we really stop and think, you don't need to ask anybody. This is super obvious for so many reasons. But when you actually do interview people and you speak to them all the time, every single one of them sees the exact same story. And all the ones who return, it's always either I didn't manage to find work where I went, so I didn't want to stay there, or I got enough work, I saved up enough, and I came back because I, I was I wanted that quality of life. So they become the reverse expat, except, of course, we don't see them as an expat. We call it returning home and don't count it in this consistency. We think of it as a more of the paradox. But when you think of it in this one consistent way, anytime someone is in need of work and can't find it, they will shift towards the United States. Anytime people have work and don't need to be in the U.S. to maintain that work or financial position, they will shift to Nicaragua for so many reasons, not just because quality of life is better, but also because their uh, income or savings or investments will go so much farther. So if they were in the United States and had a significant number of investments, but not enough to live that they still had to work by moving to Nicaragua, maybe they don't need to work anymore. That draws them down as well. So this consistency, I think, answers a lot of the questions that people have, a lot of the surprises that people have. They just don't understand why they see so much migration in the modern world and what you're seeing, just like inside the United States. People who have plenty of financial resources tend to move to certain states and play and regions and cities that are not necessarily good employers, but good employment locations like San Francisco or New York City tend to be super expensive. So if you're not making an income based on that location, uh, you're unlikely to want to move to that location. People move there because they acquire a job or because they think they're going to acquire a job. And if they are trying to retire, they naturally get out. They want to go to a place with lower taxes, lower cost of uh, living in general, lower cost of labor. And, and home prices. That is the obvious thing. The exact same thing is playing out on a more dynamic scale internationally because what you, you get is more monitored and, and much more difficult to do. And so you see it playing out slightly differently because it doesn't have the open borders. You can't just move around uh, and you're seeing it on a, on a global scale instead of a national one. But the, the behavior is actually all the same. So that's uh, needed to get that explained because I get asked about that so often. And people ask in both directions. If the United States is so awesome, why would anyone move to Nicaragua? If Nicaragua is so awesome, why would anyone move to the United States? I can't understand why people are moving in both directions. They're crossing as they go. And it's like, oh, I'm going to paradise. Oh, I'm going to the greatest country. I'm going, and it, it's like, what do you mean? But I'm going to where you came from. This is why, because it's the underlying situations that make all the difference, not the destination. It's everyone migrates based on their needs. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can either buy me a coffee from the link that will show up there, and it's down in the show notes, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. comes directly to me, makes a huge difference. We also have a membership, which only gives you access to a private discussion group. Not a big deal, but it's a $5 monthly commitment and helps just form the basis of financing the show. We have a lot of expenses in travel, cameras, software, licensing, and so forth. Uh, we don't make anything doing the show, so the support that you guys give help to offset that, and we really, really appreciate it. And uh, I'll be heading out on my trip now, so thanks for taking a moment to watch this show, and you can also support the channel simply by watching another show after this and by telling someone else about the show and getting them hooked as well. If you have any questions, scroll down, ask them down there, or look in the show notes. You can send in a video of yourself and ask a question that way. We'd love to put some of our viewers on the show. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you all from Panama tomorrow.